Hello, this is Dr. Kamani, licensed clinical psychologist, and I wanted to talk to you about more research that I found in relation to Black women in toxic jobs and the impact, the negative impact of stress. So I was motivated to do this video after watching a live by my Spelman sister, Dr. Monica Cox, who trademarked Stop Playing Diversity. So in terms of performative diversity, I have a number of videos on my channel, which Dr. Cox has been on, um, talking about Stop Playing Diversity and the harm that we experience with performative diversity efforts or gestures, may I say. So I wanted to talk about this research article that Dr. Cox talked about and give my reflections as well as some tips, some healing tips for you if you're in a stressful situation at a toxic job. So the article is called New Exhale Report Highlights Lack of Self-Care Available to Black Women. And so they surveyed a number of Black women, um, over a thousand Black women, and they asked them in terms of their experience of stress and their personal and their professional um, areas of their lives. And so the results stated that 50% of Black women stated that stress profoundly impacts their life. So when we think about stress, stress is like cortisol. It's like bathing your body. So you're like just sitting in cortisol. And you may remember in the previous video I did in terms of other research findings. So I talked about and I detailed a number of research findings, and I'll put that in the description section so you can see that video. But one of the things they talked about was weathering and the impact of chronic stress and the overload as a result of the chronic stress and how that can weather you in terms of making you older, making your organs older, causing a level of psychological uh, distress as well. Okay, so again, check out that previous video I did about that. So in this survey, again, 50% said that they're experiencing a profound amount of stress and it's impacting their lives. And 25% said that the stress level was so high that it required them to get medical attention or hospitalization. That is very serious. So I want you to reflect on yourself and your life and really assess the level of stress that you're experiencing. It may be professional, it may be personal, it might be a combination of both, but we need to be mindful of our stress level because it can kind of sneak up on us, but things we might see, and we know as black people, many of us have high blood pressure, many of us have diabetes, uh, obesity, all of these issues are really impacted by stress too. So I invite you to really check that out for yourself Please get a physical to see like, where are you? What are the areas maybe that you might need additional support with? And in what ways is stress impacting your physical health? And then you know about mental health, that stress can definitely impact your mental health as well. Okay, so the research also noted, and uh, the woman that they interviewed actually developed an app for Black women um, in relation to dealing with our stress level, which I think is incredible. So again, I'll put this article in the description section so you can see the article. And also the woman's name, the founder of Exhale, Katara McCarthy, she talked about the need to develop resources specifically for Black women because our experiences are unique. And many times, um, different apps or resources or self-care activities, they don't really have a full understanding of our reality as Black women. So she's developed this app. And then again, going back to the research, uh, she said 76% of respondents believe that prevailing societal notions label Black women as innately stronger than their counterparts. So therefore, it's this perception of, oh, well, you're strong, you can take it. Oh, you've always been able to handle it. So there's almost like a dehumanizing impact. So because we're so-called so strong that number one, people can't really hurt us and that we should be able to withstand additional stress. And so while as black women, we have had to persevere many times because of societal pressures and expectations, it is harmful for us to continue to take on more and more and more and not get the rest of support that we need, okay? Um, she also noted in the research 
that 66% reported overexerting themselves in the workplace. So going overboard or over and above, right, what they needed to do in their careers and to fulfill personal obligations. So you may know what this is like in your workplace in terms of you taking on the extra projects or you filling in the gaps or you're the point person, or what about this one? You are tasked or given the opportunity, as they say, to um, do DEI work, even though you're not given the extra money, the support, anything like that. So you may be tasked for that. And in your personal life, you might be the it person. So you may be seen as the one who takes care of everything, you organize everything, you make sure everything's good, but then you lose sight of yourself and you're not taking care of yourself. And that can be extremely dangerous because of the stress level. So in terms of resources, as I said before, she has developed an app, okay? So um, it might be a good idea to check this out. And she said something in relation to, it is very difficult for Black women to heal when our full experiences are not fully understood. So we are uh, just out in the world trying to handle all these different things and people are not really understanding our experiences. So they come up with different things like try meditation, try yoga, like try all these different things. But it's, it's a disconnect in terms of not really understanding our cultural experiences. So I wanted to offer some tips, too. So um, in the article, again, I'll put that article in the description section. So check it out. You can check out her app as well. So I have a few thoughts that I want to share with you and some tips. So in the workplace, you know, there, there are, um, I've seen, I've, I've heard of like workplaces will have like yoga and lunch or meditation. And I remember even at my toxic, my previous toxic job, there was like this meditation moment, right? So that's all good. However, once the meditation is over, once the yoga is over, are you going right back into that toxic environment? So it's not just in terms of self-care activities. It's also looking at in what ways is that job culture addressing the toxicity in the job culture? Because if you are, you know, trying to heal and you go right back into that poison, you will continue to be expo exposed to the poison. So for me, you know, my perspective is it's very hard to heal in that same environment that's harming you. So even though you're in that situation, I do want to offer you some tips. So if you're in a toxic situation, I want to give you some tips to self-care in terms of you taking control of, of your life, right? So we're thinking about our role and our, and our position and our way we function in the world as Black women. So I want to offer you some tips because number one, when we think about you know self-care, let's just bring in somebody to do yoga. Let's just bring in somebody to do this. Again, how effective is that really going to be if the whole system is toxic? Again, the water is dirty. And so I want to ask you to really self-reflect on this and to really take this seriously. How are you keeping yourself safe in that workplace? How are you doing that? So it may be a recognition, number one, that this place is toxic. So it's important for you to understand kind of what's happening around you and how it's impacting how you see yourself, how you see others, and how the level of impact is having on your life, okay? So that's the first thing. So I wanted to offer you some tips. One is to view your situation as a short-term situation. So once you've assessed that this is a toxic environment and this is harming me and I need to get out, Start viewing this job as a short-term situation and you are on your way. You are taking whatever steps you need to, maybe baby steps, but you're making steps to getting out so that no, you no longer dread any day of your life. You no longer dread waking up. You no longer dread Sunday evening. Like, oh my God, I got to go back to that place. So say that to yourself and work on that for yourself, that this is a short-term situation that you're in right now in this toxic job, you are making steps, whatever this might be, it might be watching my videos, might be a step for you to start getting yourself ready, getting your mind ready so that you can leave and you can no longer dread any part of your life. Okay. So that's one. Number two, I invite you to think about in what ways are you uh, 
um, doing things in terms of your psychological armoring. So as you go into that workplace, as you go into that poisonous environment, what are you doing to, as much as you can, try to protect yourself? So that two things might be helpful. One is rest. So try to make sure that you're getting enough rest. If you could take naps, you know, once you get home or on the weekend, but also making sure that you're resting at night. That's very important. Shout out to the nap ministry. The other thing is therapy. So as you are going in these experiences, you may be encountering a lot of different things, microaggressions, tone policing, pet to threat, um, not being given uh, promotional op opportunities, even though you're overqualified. Those are just some of the things. It might be more than that or an intersection of many things. So when you're in that work environment, what are the ways that you can start talking about your experiences with an objective person? Because when you're in the workplace, something you may also experience in a toxic job is the gaslighting. So they're gaslighting you to the point where you might start self-gaslighting gaslighting yourself. So I'll talk about this in a video that I did with Marissa Price. And Marissa Price also did her own video on self-gaslighting. So check those out as well. So therapy provides you with the opportunity to say, hey, wait a minute, they're gaslighting you, okay? And it provides you with a space to be able to uh, self-reflect. It allows you for a space for you to deal with your fears in relation to leaving that toxic job because the fears are real. And it provides you with an opportunity to self-reflect, um, uh, not only in terms of reality testing. So, okay, so I did this, they did this. Based upon what I'm saying, what do you think about this? So reality testing is there and therapy is very important as well. So I'll put information again about how to find a black therapist in the description section of this video. And then the next tip I want to give is work on your exit plan. So working on your exit plan, again, it may start with just watching my videos. It might start with that. It might be working with a coach in terms of getting your resume together. It may be going to more networking activities so that you can learn about different opportunities, kind of putting yourself out there um, and whatever feels comfortable for you, right? It may be looking at your finances, see where you are in terms of your finances. I do want to say also that I, I am coming out with a master class with a financial psychologist, a Black woman financial psychologist who actually helped me as I was preparing to get out of that toxic job. So we're going to have that masterclass to help you get your money together so that you can leave that toxic job and not feel like money is what's holding you there. And what is your plan to get something else, another job, another business, whatever it might be, so you can supplement the money that you are making at your job. So you don't feel like the job is just, you're just stuck. You're stuck. There's no way to get out. You can't get out. And the last tip I want to give you is viewing your job as an investor to your next professional opportunity. So let's say you have a side hustle, or let's say you're trying to create your own business. You can use a portion of the money that you're getting from your job to help you as you are developing or further developing your side hustle or your new business or whatever that might be, okay? So I want to just give you some tips because we know that stress is very harmful very harmful in terms of physically, psychologically. I talked about that in a previous video. I'm talking about it here as well. So if you are feeling that stress, you feel that tension, you know, that tension in your body. For me, it's in my shoulders. Think about where are you feeling tension in your body and what are you attributing that to? Is it your job? Is it your personal life? What is going on in those areas that's making you feel that degree of stress? And what types of changes need to happen so that you experience less stress because the stress, the ongoing stress will take a toll on you. And we don't want you to um, dread any part of your life or, or just feel the sense of helplessness or hopelessness that things will never get better for me, or I'm just going to just keep going to toxic jobs. You can, that can happen to you, particularly if you don't recognize certain things that may be um, in terms of research, you know, are you researching certain jobs? Are you networking? Are you aware of what you're really looking for in terms of what you consider to be a good job? 
So there's a number of things to keep in mind, but I, I really want to challenge you with the notion that all jobs are toxic. I might as well just stay at this job because all jobs are toxic. And I might as well just stay with the devil. I know I did a video about that too. We don't want to know any devils, none. Okay. We might know them. We might see them, but we don't want to stay in close proximity to them. That's not healthy. So if you're in a situation and you are recognizing that you are under a lot of stress and you want to get out, but you might be stuck, but you're dreading every day going to your job then reach out to me. We can schedule a discovery call. You get on my calendar and we can talk about ways I can support you because dreading any part, any part of your day or your life, you know what that feels like. It doesn't feel good. Okay. So again, click the link and get on my calendar. We can schedule a discovery call. Okay. So I'm signing off. Please give this video a thumbs up and also share this video with other Black women who you know might be in a similar situation. She might be stressed out. You might be seeing her and she is looking stressed. You know what that looks like, okay? Okay, so I'm signing off and I will see you next time. Take care, bye-bye.